I've learned probably more in terms of hands-on things uh, and a lot of life experiences, more from him than, than anyone else I've ever met in my life. The black, the first two have been fed, and these two have been fed, but I know we'll fix it. I, I moved over to Canada in 2007. Uh, originally, I was in Kingston, Ontario. I had a girlfriend out there, and uh, we broke up, and I didn't know what to do. Uh, I was at a backpackers in Toronto, and I saw a job notice appear on the board. It said, come to Churchill, breed Eskimo dogs, see polar bears. <laughs> so I jumped at the opportunity, and that's how I ended up in Manitoba. I was in Churchill helping this guy Brian out with his dogs. <laughs> And um, I saw a great opportunity to tell um, a story about a man who has a mission and through all adversary is, is still, you know, still on that mission 30 years later. The bears and the dogs, for the most part, they don't even care about each other. Well, when I put the dogs here, I have on the outside points where the female section is males that are uh, sentinels, so they're pretty brave. <laughs> The Canadian Eskimo dog is the indigenous dog of the Arctic, really. So these dogs are the dogs the Inuit used um, to migrate across the Arctic Circle uh, for hunting, for living, for everything. It was these dogs. So um, really, they're historically important to Canada because they populated the north of this country. Um, and uh, there are very few left now uh, through a, a number of different reasons. Their population dropped to below 100, as estimated and a few people tried to keep the breed alive, and Brian is one of those people. We've got around about 150 up there at the moment, so you can imagine it's quite the job, uh, even just feeding that many dogs. But I mean, that's, um, that's the largest population of these dogs anywhere left on the planet. Churchill is also the polar bear capital of the world, so we have polar bears migrating through there October, November, waiting for the Hudson Bay to freeze so they can travel north. Um, where Brian keeps his dogs, he's tried to keep the area as natural as possible. So there's no fences or gates um, or buildings, and the polar bears just happen to use that area as a resting spot as well. And, you know, Churchill's had ups and downs with polar bears over the years, and Brian has really tried to um, make a unique environment where his dogs and the polar bears can coexist. Uh, a place where the polar bears can feel safe, they're not getting harassed by people, uh, and a place where the dogs are still being stimulated by their natural environment and the polar bears because they were um, you know, living in the Arctic Circle with, with the polar bears at one time. I fell in love with the area, I fell in love with the town, the people, uh, and I really needed to help Brian out. Like, um, I felt um, a sense of obligation as well. I guess um, his mission kind of rubbed off on me and I, and I wanted to achieve something for him and for the dogs before I felt comfortable to leave. These dogs have such a pack mentality that you can walk through the valleys of the shadow of death and fear no evil and they will skirt and protect you like you wouldn't believe. I don't know if I'm a lifer but I'll definitely be uh, going back there for the rest of my life. Yeah, there's no doubt about that. It's, uh, it's in my veins now, the north. I love it up there. It's not all that often that you're put in a situation where you actually have to put your life in somebody else's hands. And, uh, and that happens on a, it can happen on a daily basis out there.